I was going to ask everybody, if Mike had asked me beforehand to remind you that it's daylight savings time to switch over this weekend, set your clocks back and you have another hour. <laughs> uh, what I'd like to do right now, if you wouldn't mind, uh, we have a substitute for Colonel Mike Drake from the 3rd CAG. It's uh, Lieutenant Colonel Andy Roberto, uh, who is the Executive Officer of Reserve Side for the 3rd CAG. And, and please, uh, well, let me go ahead and get started. Thanks all. While well, we're getting that queued up, I just want to say I'm going to try and beat that, that time hack here. I know that uh, we're, we're tight on time, and I don't know if it's harder to give a, a presentation right after lunch or 45 minutes before cocktail hour, so we're going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit. Uh, as we said, on, on behalf of my boss, Colonel Drake, I'd like to go ahead and express his regret for not being here. His, his base job, or rather his full-time job, is the uh, Director of Base Operations, and as you heard, we're out in Camp Pendleton, California. So he's obviously very well engaged right now and couldn't quite break away due to the, uh, the fires out there. So anyway, I'm not going to go into a lot of the, the things that were brought up earlier. What you're going to hear me talk about very briefly is that one nice thing about being out here today is that there's a tremendous amount of common themes that we keep hearing. So a lot of your concerns are our concerns. A lot of your challenges are our challenges. Uh, and I could sit here and think about half a dozen concepts and thoughts that were brought up where we could plug in USMC civil affairs uh, in place of uh, what the Army's facing right now. So we'll just go ahead and press ahead and uh, again I'll save all the questions, more focused questions, uh, for the end of the uh, time that we're here. This is just a real quick brief snapshot, it's just a thumbnail to show you where we've been and where we're going at, at present. Obviously uh, pre-9-11 our main focus was supporting our annual training exercises. Most of you already know what those are. Uh, we did Cobra Gold in Thailand, UFL Korea, some of the New Horizons uh, exercises as well in Central and South America. Uh, in addition to that, pre-9-11, we did have some real-world contingency support operations in Panama, Haiti, Bosnia, and Kosovo. Uh, of course, as the complexion of things has changed, what we saw is that since 9-11, and especially since OIF, 3rd Civil Affairs Group, as well as the 4th Civil Affairs Group, has had almost a near continuous presence out in, uh, in the Middle East. And you'll see and you'll hear more about this when I'm sure Colonel Montgomery comes tomorrow and talks to you about issues like command and control and deployment, that a lot of this does apply for, for both the Marine Civil Affairs groups. Uh, we mobilized and deployed in OIF-2, or correction, OIF-1 in 2003. We went as a group again as an entire unit in 2004 uh, we supported debt in 2005, went again as a full unit in 2006, and very shortly here we're going to be supporting another debt uh, for the next rotation here shortly with uh, the uh, next uh, iteration. And this will be explained a little bit further again with the uh, concept that you're going to hear where, the, uh, as you've heard before, we're just out of Schlitz, as you can see. And so. The bottom line is that the artillery regiments on the active side of the Marine Corps have been tapped to fulfill a civil military role uh, simply because the reserve component doesn't have that. And you'll see the challenges that I'll bring out for you here in a second. As if it were already a challenge to begin with, we still come back and do those very same things that you saw pre-9-11. We still come back from OIF and we're still supporting all those exercises, be it Thailand, be it Korea, be it Central and South America, and anything else that may pop up on the radar. So again, the common themes that you all experience are the same things that we're facing as well. What we're also doing, and that fills up our schedule quite significantly, is, uh, I believe it was mentioned before in the, uh, the CTCs that you all do, similar to that, we have the uh, support we provide to the exercise that we call Mojave Viper. And that's that partnership where we provide civil affairs support to those infantry units, those infantry battalions that are getting ready to push overseas, and that's usually held out at Camp Pendle or uh, 29 Palms, California. So what are our issues? What, what is it that, that we face, that you face, that creates that same uh, partnership that we all sense together? Uh, as it, I heard someone else brought it up earlier before, recruiting and retention of officers is especially problematic for the Marine Corps. Um, I can't tell you the difficulty that we have in finding company grade officers to fill those team leader vacancies, the team leader billets. Uh, there's not a shortage of field grade officers and, and that's really not what we need. What we are especially having a problem with is those company grade officers 
that are few and far between in the Marine Reserve component. Keeping those officers, again, two Marine Corps Civil Affairs units at present, one on the West Coast, which is us, 3rd Civil Affairs Group in Pendleton, we're habitually associated with 1st Marine Expeditionary Force. On the East Coast, we have our brothers with 4th Civil Affairs Group that are also habitually associated with the 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force. What that does is it creates a geographic challenge for us. It's very difficult for us to retain people who are non obligor reservists because what that means is that as a lot of, same for the soldiers, as a lot of Marines want to participate in that great mission of civil affairs, what they're finding out is that if you want to participate and you're a non obligor reservist, you're going to have to pay out of pocket your travel costs to come to that unit. That's where we have the biggest problem in keeping officers as well as our senior enlisted personnel. The future of CAG, again, you'll hear that again as we progress forward. I just saw Colonel Montgomery walking. How you doing, sir? And what you're going to do is you're going to see that the, the future of CAG is changing radically for the Marine Corps. You'll hear it again, you've heard it before, uh, the concept of putting up an active duty civil affairs unit. That's going to be on the radar coming up. The emergence of the MCAG, which you're going to hear next, that's also creating some additional help for us as well. Uh, our, our ongoing daily challenges beyond that are the same things that every unit has in the reserve component. And that's that challenge of trying to combine and, and, and stuff into those 48 drills in those two weeks. Not only the challenge of training to our primary MOS, because for the Marine Corps, uh, civil affairs is a secondary MOS, it's not even a primary. Okay, so we still have, for those Marines that want to stay competitive and relevant for promotional purposes, they still need to train in their primary MOS. On top and above that, we have that requirement again to do the right thing and train as diligently as possible to be the best civil affairs personnel that we can be. And then of course the annual training requirements. Uh, every, everybody in the service knows this, whether it's shooting on the range, whether it's swimming, whether it's uh, you know, going to the gas chamber, those things eat into our training plan. So those are the, the, the basic issues and, and challenges that we face. We're still doing it now, it's still going to be uh, an issue for us in the future, but that's our snapshot. And, and again, I'm not trying to expand this uh, any more than it needs to be. And again, for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to go any deeper into it because again, a lot of it you'll hear later on as the TOs and the Ts keep getting adjusted, that'll change as well. So that's really all I want to present for now. Thank you. Thank you very much.